mighty king who man must honor and obey but he went astray and God said my people need a friend so many years ago in Bethlehem a baby came like a violet in the snow he was wrinkled and red and he cried just the same as you and I and as she held her son Merry Christmas. Thank you. Welcome to Holy Family Parish for the celebration of this Holy Mass. Today, we return to expand that celebration to this immediate family, the Holy Family. Mary and Joseph cared for their son, raising him in the religious traditions of their faith. In this loving environment, Luke says, Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before God and man. Let us pray today that our families may provide fertile ground for our children to grow similarly. Our opening hymn is number 340 in the Missalette Heart the herald angels sing.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Happy Feast of the Holy Family. This is our, pe our feast day of our parish. So I would encourage you, if you haven't chosen a Mass intention yet, please pray for our parish. Uh, we may look around and see the faces and pray for the people of our parish. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to celebrate our feast day together. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray.
O God, who are pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel. In those days, Hannah conceived, and at the end of her term, bore a son, whom she called Samuel, since she had asked the Lord for him. The next time her husband, Elkanah, was going up to the rest of his household to offer the customary sacrifice to the Lord and to follow his vows, Hannah did not go explaining to her husband, Once the child is weaned, I will take him to appear before the Lord and to remain there forever. I will offer him as a perpetual Nazarite. Once Samuel was weaned, Hannah brought him up with her, along with three-year-old bull, a ifa, flower, and a skin of wine and presented him at the temple of the Lord in Shiloh. After the boy's father had sacrificed the young bull, Hannah, his mother, approached Eli and said, Pardon, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood near you here praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, and the Lord granted my request. Now I, in turn, give him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. Hannah left Samuel there. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial Psalm. Blessed are they who dwell in your house, O Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul yearns and pines for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the holy living God. Blessed are they who dwell in the house of the Lord. Happy they who dwell in your house. Continually they praise you. Happy the men whose strength you are. Their hearts are set upon the pilgrimage. Blessed are they who dwell in the house of the Lord. O Lord of hosts, hear our prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. Blessed are they who dwell in the A reading from the first letter of St. Paul. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, We have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this. We should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to the festival custom. As they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was with the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but did not find him. They returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus advanced in wisdom and age and favor before man and God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, Merry Christmas, the second day of Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Feast of Holy Family and Happy Feast of St. Stephen, all rolled up in one day. The Christmas season goes by way too fast. And this year, it's going to go by even faster because Christmas landed on a Saturday. So today we celebrate Holy Family Feast Day. Next Sunday, we'll celebrate the Epiphany, and the week after that, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next year, Christmas lands on a Sunday, and we get an extra week of Christmas season, so we got something, something to look forward to. On Christmas Eve and Christmas morning, Father Tom talked about the importance of Christmas, the Christmas gift, Jesus coming to us in the world seeing everything that we have as a gift and being thankful for them gifts. Today, again, we, we are going to celebrate that we are celebrating the Feast of Holy Family, our parish feast day. The Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph is the model Christian family or a family that we all should try to imitate. We live in a world that advertises convenience and instant gratification. But the Holy Family models unselfishness and total trust in God. So just think about this for a minute. Jesus, who is fully, who is fully God, was there from the very beginning of the universe. He emptied himself out of his divinity to become human, just like us, so that, that we may be saved through him. Mary gave her yes to the angel Gabriel to, the, to be the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. She trusted God, even though she could not have understood all that would come about. And Joseph, who could not have understood how his betrothed wife became pregnant. He trusted in God and selflessly took care of Mary and Jesus the rest of his life. To have that trust, that kind of trust in God, takes a deep prayer life. 
And in the past four weeks, Father Tom and I have been focusing our homilies on the importance of prayer and the different styles of prayer that we have. The Holy Family would have used each of these styles of prayer throughout their lives. Mary and Joseph would have taught the child Jesus to memorize prayers, especially the Psalms. Mary and Joseph would have taught the child Jesus to share prayer, where we acknowledge God and give him praise and adoration, where we thank God for all the gifts that we have, and that we ask for anything that's on our hearts or minds. And of course, the apostles added through our Lord Jesus Christ, just as Jesus taught them. Mary and Joseph would have taught the child Jesus Lectio Divina that Father Tom talked about last Sunday, where we repeat the scripture passages four times, using our imagination to enter into the passage, imagining the sights, the sounds, and the smells of the passage, meditating on each word, then sitting in silence as we allow God to come into the, our hearts and fill us with the message that he is trying to convey to us. The Holy Family would have done all these type of prayers. But what about us? What is keeping us from deepening our prayer life? If the Holy Family is a model family, should we not strive to imitate them? Deepening our own prayer life and teaching our children and grandchildren to do the same thing? New Year's is just around a corner. Could each of us take a, make a New Year's resolution to deepen our prayer life and to renew our commitment to teaching our children how to pray just as Mary and Joseph taught the child Jesus. Now, there are many benefits when praying as a family. I'd like to share you a story that Ginger and I experienced when we were praying with our family one time. So in about, this about 12 years ago, Ginger and I, we were going to take our kids on our very first ski trip up to Ski Brule. So we got up real early in the morning, probably around 4.30, and we loaded the kids up in the big van. So the kids came right out of bed in their sweatpants, sweat, sweatshirts. They jumped in the van, and we headed up north, and they all fell asleep. I had my bluegrass on, of course. <clears throat> we stopped in Wobino to, have, to a family restaurant to have breakfast. And as we all went in there, we all sat down, ordered coffee and, and breakfast. But when the, and our food came together, we did our meal prayer. We had a, a nice meal. We, we, um, I got up to pay the bill. And when, uh, when I went to the wait chest at the counter with the bill, she said to me, well, you don't have to pay anything. The gentleman who just left paid your bill for you. I said, well, who was it? And she said, well, I don't know who it was, but he just, he just left, so you're, you're good. I said, awesome. <laughs> and as I was pondering that on the, way, on the rest of the way up to Ski Brule, I'm thinking there's two reasons that that person uh, paid our bill. And the first reason was because we prayed as a family. He saw us pray the before meal prayer, doing the sign of the cross, and the blessed, uh, blessed this food that we prayed. That's the first reason I thought of. The second reason I thought, well, maybe they saw us. We all wore glasses, right? We all wore glasses, contacts. We all looked pretty, pretty, pretty rough, right? Sweatpants, sweatshirts, hairs all up in the air because they were sleeping, the kids were sleeping. You probably thought, maybe that guy can't afford to feed his family. <laughs> I'm thinking it was the first reason he saw us to pray. So there are benefits of praying as a family. But I want to encourage us all to make that New Year's resolution to imitate the Holy Family by deepening our prayer life 
and teaching our children to pray. Nike has a slogan that says, just do it. Father Tom enhanced that slogan when he added, because that's what Catholics do. I'm going to implore you, and I promise this is the last time this year I'm going to say this, to make a New Year's resolution to grow closer to God by deepening your prayer life. Just do it, because that's what Catholics do. We are the disciples of Jesus Christ, so let us publicly profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing God's mercy and love, let us turn to him with our prayers and petitions. that all members of the church, through God's grace, may be, thank, may be faithful to the message entrusted to us by Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in authority may be guided by the Holy Spirit in seeking justice for their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from chronic illness, may be relieved and healed through the gracious mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this faith community may grow in faith, hope, and love, transformed by the grace to a life of gospel fidelity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people in the Holy Family Parish boundaries, both the living and the deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God in heaven, we come before you with these and all of our prayers. Grant them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please turn in singing number 320 in the Missalette, O Come, All Ye Faithful. <laughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in the grace of your peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, through the, through, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all times, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying... Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please turn in singing number 305 in the Missalette Silent Night. Start in singing number 331, What Child Is This?
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the examples of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, before we say go in peace, would those bringing communion to the homebound please come forward? Hold it right there. You are sent from this assembly to bring the word of God and the, and the bread of life to the sick and the homebound members of our parish family. We ask you to do this with love and our care and our prayers. And do this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and gentle healer. Thank you for So with that, you'll get another blessing. The Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing number 215, Joy to the World. <laughs> 